All right, so in this chapter, we're going to be discussing the relationship between structural development in the brain and behavior. So structural development can be studied and correlated with the emergence of brain behavior, but it is really important to realize that the two naturally complement each other that brain development can influence behavior, and then in turn, behavior can influence brain development. Behavioral development can be analyzed and predictions can be made about what underlying circuitry must be emerging. And this is a very common form of research that takes place in developmental psychology. So for example, you would have uh, behavioral development in terms of language, and this then means that if the child is beginning to speak, then you have brain development occurring that is sufficient for language to occur. So in this way, you'll see that you can have brain development predict behavior and behavior predict brain development. And the reason that you have this sort of cyclical relationship is that we cannot easily see inside of our brains in a sort of dynamic fashion to say like, oh, okay, hey, look, this area is starting to form. Oh, we can expect her to start speaking at any time now. Well, that's not really feasible. Instead, we have to look at the behaviors that are observed and infer what would be going on inside the brain. But then we have learned what types of brain development is necessary for certain behavioral functions to occur. And this has been done through functional neuroimaging, structural neuroimaging, the study of certain types of disorders, a whole host of experiments. So now through both scientific advances and through behavioral research, then we can start to put the pieces together of the relationship between brain development and the demonstration of certain behaviors. So there are a number of factors that influence the brain and behavior relationship. Hormones are gonna turn on at particular times in development and that will influence brain development and behavior. Genes are also set to turn on at certain times to influence growth and that will influence the brain and behavior relationship and experience has a huge role in the development of the brain and the, the emergence of certain behaviors. If you are in a learning conducive environment, then you're going to have the demonstration of behaviors at an earlier age. If you are, however, in an impoverished environment without access to an array of stimulating experiences, then your brain is going to be developmentally delayed. And then of course you can also have injury. So if you injure your brain, then that will quite obviously influence the brain development and behavior development relationship. So here is a little bit of basic neurobiology development information. So early in development, all vertebrates actually look alike. These are all early fetuses here. And you can see the salamander, the chick, and the human. They all look relatively similar. But then they're all going to be uh, evolving or growing to, into quite different species and animals. This here is actually some evidence for similar evolutionary origins in that these very different species start to grow from some of the same origins. And here's the basic gross development of the human nervous system. So we have prenatal stages. This includes the zygote. This is fertilization to two weeks. And then you have the embryo, which is two to eight weeks. And then you have the fetus. And the fetus is from nine weeks to birth. And the neural plate this is a thickened region of the ectodermal layer that gives rise to the neural tube. This starts to develop three weeks after conception. And the neural tube is a structure in the early stage of brain development from which the brain and spinal cord develop. So 
the neural plate becomes the neural tube, the neural tube becomes the brain and the spinal cord. And here you can see this is an embryonic vertebrae nervous system. Here you have the forebrain, the midbrain, the hindbrain. These are all visible in the human embryo at about 28 days. Okay, This here is the neural tube, which is eventually going to form the spinal cord. This is the early beginnings of the brain right here. And here we can just walk through the various stages of brain development in embryo. Um, you have 25 days here. Again, you see the very early stages of the brain. The, so the cortex is really small, but then as it continues to develop here, the cortex gets a little bit larger and continues to get larger. And then you start to have these folds here because this is going to become the cerebellum. See these fold in here. So here you have at 100 days, five months, six months, seven months. So again, continuing for the cortex to get larger and larger, eight months. And here you have nine months, okay? And so this structure in here is primarily the same sort of the brainstem, but what's continuing to develop is the cortex. And so that by the time the child is born, you want to have some of these cortical folds. And these cortical folds reflect that there is sufficient neurogenesis, the creation of uh, neurons. These are all the neurons that you would need for higher cortical function. So these cortical folds indicate that there's so much neuron, so many neurons in there that they need to sort of fold up on each other to make room and have space. And so this is this is the ideal scenario that should occur cortically for birth.